Okay, hello everybody. Are you out there? Probably not. It took me about 13 minutes to uh, get over some technical difficulties. Well, you can always watch this on the replay, which I will put up for you. And today we're going to go over lesson 37, the proportion of orange Reese's pieces. So there is an... Uh, a website you need to go to if you can get there uh, for doing this and uh, let me show you that right now it's it's in the description on Google Classroom Ross Mann and Chance are the names of two statisticians what a name Chance for a statistician fantastic well they created this app so that we wouldn't have to do the simulation um, in the lesson it says the proportion of orange is going to be 40% so I've set it up to be 0.4 over here in the upper left hand corner and the number of counties is 50 so the sample size is 50 it says suppose a large bag of Reese's pieces has 1000 pieces the manufacturer says that exactly 40% of the candies are orange if we select a sample of 50 pieces, how many will be orange? And the random variable is the number of orange candies in the sample. Well, let's just see what happens when we go ahead and play with this app. We're going to go ahead and draw samples. So there's our estimation of 50. After you do this once or twice, you're going to want to turn off the animation. Okay, so even though the proportion is supposed to be 40%, it says here we got 16 orange ones. That is 32%. So just like when we did our project on simulation, we may aim for one thing, but we may get a completely different number. And that's the variation that comes from sampling. Well, let's look at, see if our stream is still live. It says we are not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth stream. Could be because I'm out here in my trailer. Uh, this is the only place that I could find that was quiet enough to actually record and make a video because inside the house we're homeschooling just like everybody's homeschooling right now well I don't know why it seems like we're generating enough uh, data here so if you're buffering this if you can't see this live then that's okay we'll just put the replay up in fact, I'll edit this so that we just get the highlights. If you're out there, if anybody's out there and can hear me, go ahead and type a comment on the right side. I'm going to say something in the comments. Is anybody out there? And there might be four diehard people out there. Well, that's sad. I'm sorry that you're not getting smooth video. I'll see if there's anything I can do next time to fix that. Maybe in the software I'm using. Oh, look, Joey's out there. There is life outside of my house. That's good to know. Went out to the store yesterday. It was pretty crazy. Stater Brothers, they had the line in the store going all the way around the inside of the store. I don't know if you guys have ventured out yet. Um, I don't know if you saw this yesterday. Also, the governor was saying that we may not go back to school for the rest of the school year. So you may be watching by, I mean, le learning by watching videos. Who knows? 
Anyway, let's get back to it. I know I have at least one person out there. Oh, you know what? One question. Joey, are you uh, experiencing delays? Any kind of delays? I don't know if you can hear me. Let me type that. Are you viewers experiencing buffering? Well, then I'm just going to ignore what YouTube is telling me and let's get right into the lesson then. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and convert my laptop like I normally do so I can write on it better. Okay, here we go. Okay, um, number one, what type of probability distribution does X have justify? Well, if you think about it, they're either orange or not orange. Um, we are not replacing the Reese's pieces so it's not really independent but since there's a thousand pieces we're not taking more than 10 percent of them 10 percent of them would be a hundred so since the sample size is 50 we're okay that way um the number of trials is fixed it's 50 50 candies and the probability of success remains the same throughout so it looks like we have binomial because we have B, orange or not, we have I, in this case it's not technically independent, but the 10% rule says that 50 is less than one tenth of a thousand, because there's a thousand pieces. N is fixed at 50. 50 candies. And S, which is probability of success, remains constant at 0.5. Nope, sorry, 0.4. Any questions so far? Let's see. We can't see the full paper. I only see the top part of it. Okay, can you see what I just wrote? Oh, I see. This is the problem I was having earlier. I couldn't get it to capture um, the full screen or this window so I had to just capture the whole entire display. Uh, maybe what I could do is I could shrink this down a little bit. Okay, that probably made a little difference. This laptop has a really high display rate. Oh, there we go. So you you are missing a whole lot of this. Okay, let's check back here. Is that better? I won't know. I'm lagging behind a little bit. Okay, now I'm watching myself resize the window. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you can see this, and I'll check back. So there's what I have for number one. It's basically what we were doing in the last unit with bins. We're trying to figure out, you know, what what is it exactly? Okay, number two would be something that we would do as a class. It says draw a sample of 50 Reese's pieces using the applet. 
how many pieces were orange and repeat this five times writing your values below so that would be something each individual person would do probably would have the Chromebooks out at this point and then number three write the values on sticker dots and add it to the dot plot on the board well this is usually where I go through the class and I ask each of you what your data was or I ask you to come up to the board and write your own data on the board uh, well obviously we can't do that in this situation but we can go back to the app let's see alright Joey says yes so we can see it now six people are watching but you're the only one that dares to say anything Joey so good for you extra credit okay so what we'll do here is if you notice we can change the number of samples so assuming there's uh oh my keyboard won't come up come on there we go assuming there's say 30 people in the class we'll just say that this is 30 and that will simulate the entire class doing this a number of times you notice I have the animation turned off otherwise it gets really irritating and here we go okay so we get that and if you could try to copy something like that onto your paper it doesn't have to be exact in fact you could um, you could copy it from your own computer it doesn't have to be from my computer it'll look a little different but I'm gonna go ahead and fake it right here fake it till you make it something like this it seemed to be a peak and then it went down what does each dot represent well if you think about it those dots represented people people that were taking samples of five no I tell you I have that bone they were taking samples of 50 and they each did it five times actually you know what I don't have enough data if 30 people did it five times that would be a hundred and fifty so let me go back and we'll just do this again we'll change this to a higher number that's going to give us an even better graph let's go to 150 and draw the samples okay much much better now I'll give you a little preview here's kind of what we're after here you see over on the left side it says normal approximation if you go ahead and click that overlays the normal curve do you see how normal these dots became I mean they're not great right but here would be the exact if it was a binomial so not not very different that's sort of what we're after so um, each dot is gonna represent the number of orange from a sample of 50 the number of orange from a sample of 50 now that would mean that the scale here okay what would be our expected value well if you think about it if we have a 40 percent and we took 50 at a time we would expect the mean to be 20 so our peak should be 20 and then probably this would be around 30 40 10 and 0 there would be very little data past 40 because that would be more than two standard deviations away and we know if you go more than two standard deviations away the number really drops Okay, so what is the mean and standard deviation for the distribution of x? Well, we just did the 20, so the mean is 0.4 times 5, or 50, which is 20. Now we are assuming that this is binomial, so we're going to use that formula from last time. It's the square root of the sample, oops, the sample size 
times the probability of success times the probability of failure. How did I get the 0.6? It's because 0.4 and 0.6 have to add up to 1. And that turns out to be 3.46. Oh, I take it back then. Let's let's see. I got to change my graph. So that wouldn't be that much. So this would be this would be around 24. I'm going to round this 3.46 up to around 4. And this would be around 28. This might be 16, and this might be around 12. Since the standard deviation is 3.46, and like I said, after two standard deviations, you have very little data after that. So it should be no surprise then, number six, what's the approximate shape of the sampling distribution for x? It will be approximately normal. So up to now, this has really been a review of what we did in the last chapter. Um, there was one more thing, though, that we need to verify to say it's approximately normal. Since this comes from binomial, we need to know, are we expecting at least 10 successes and 10 failures? This is called the large counts condition. So when we found the mean, that was the number of successes we expected. The mean was 20. 20 is at least 10. So how we would document this is we would just say that since 0.4 times 50 is 20, that's greater than or equal to 10. For our failures, change it to 0.6 times 50, which would be 30, which is greater than or equal to 10. What happens is if you don't have at least 10 successes and 10 failures, then the binomial doesn't start to look normal. It will be skewed. And so um, this is good. We've got it. Let me look back and see if you've got any questions going on here. Let's see, Cass. So we turn in 1 through 12. And the understanding on page three on Google Classroom. Well, since we're doing, right, Joey, since we're doing uh, one through 12 together, or really I'm doing it for you, um, you don't have to turn in one through 12. That We would count that as the fun folder. I haven't decided to do what, uh, what to do with the fun folder now. Um, Things are changing on a daily basis. I mean, what if we don't go back to school for the rest of the school year? Will I still do the fun folder? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But um, I have to also gauge how much can I get done on Google Classroom a day. And not everybody turned in the last assignment. And I must have spent about two hours grading those, just reading your responses and stuff. So... I think I'd like to keep it to one to five on the check for understanding, because um, that way I can give you response. You know, I can actually read them and correct your errors if you have any. Let me go turn my heater off. It's kind of loud. It was like 50 degrees in here this morning. Okay, so let's go now to, looks like no more questions, so let's go to the back side of the first page. This is one of those rare three-page <coughs> um, lessons that we have. All right, now what we're doing here is we're trying to develop a new formula for proportions. So you see how proportion of orange candies it's bolded and now I, I highlighted it. That's really what we're after is what's the formula for proportions? 
So it says, instead of finding the number of candies that are orange, we will now find the proportion of candies that are orange. Emphasis on the word proportion. So it says, use your samples from number two and turn each number of orange candies into the proportion of orange candies in the sample. Write the proportions below and add them to the dot plot on the board. So if I take my first sample, which you remember was 16, it was 16 out of 50. So that's how I knew it was 0.32. So here's a really weird idea. We put that equal to P and then we put this funny symbol on top of it called a hat. You, well, it's really not a hat. I don't know. It's like a mountain, something like that. Uh, this is called P hat. That means it came from the sample. See, if we just use P, the letter P, that means it came from the population. You watched the video um, the other day. It said, uh, proportions, parameters come from populations and um, samples come from, or statistics come from samples. So this is our way of denoting that this was a sample number. And you probably, if you did the lesson the way it says to do it, you have five of these numbers. You just divide all of them by 50. So what it will do is basically, I'm gonna draw two lines here. Let's say on the right, this was our original dot plot. Okay, and I'm gonna try to make it look a little bit normal with a peak and then coming down, okay. If we take each of those points, remember this is centered around 20. If we divide everything by 50, what that's going to do is it's going to transform them into a smaller version. And the 20, since that's 0.4, that's going to be where the peak is. But the only question is, what's going to happen to the standard deviation? Wouldn't the standard deviation have to shrink if everything else is going to shrink? So we're going to get a little version of that right over here okay shrink oops shrink can't spell anymore shrink by one fiftieth. now what does each dot represent well now it represents the proportion of orange from a sample of 50. So it went from the absolute number to proportion. I guess you could use as a, a synonym for that. You could say the percent of orange that came from a sample of 50. Now, find the new mean and the standard deviation. Wouldn't that make sense if we just divided by 50 that the mean and the standard deviation would also get divided by 50? So if we use our previous answers, the mean was 20. Okay, and now this is going to be a real, another funny um, way to write this. The mean sub p hat. The mean of the sample proportions is 0.4. Well, what happens to the standard deviation? Well, that was the square root of 50 times... 0.4, I'm just going to do parentheses, 50 times 0.4 times 0.6, but now that's got to get divided by 50. 
And if you do the calculation, it'll come out to 0.069. Well, with a little bit of algebra, you can take this and transform this into a slightly different formula. And we'll put this in the notes, but I'll write it over here. The standard deviation of the p hats is going to be the square root of p 1 minus p over n. So that's an algebraic transformation. I could show you if you really wanted to know how we do that, but if you're willing to just take this on faith, that will be one of our new formulas. That will be the formula that we would use on the next test. Are we going to have a next test? What would that look like? I don't know, but let's not worry about that for right now. Okay, let me go ahead and stop, see if there's any questions. Let's see. Okay, thanks Cass, I'm doing well so far. Just, you know, the seasonal allergies and stuff. How are you doing? I hope everybody in your family is good. I hope you stocked up on toilet paper. Hope you got some water there somehow. I was really surprised I went to the store the other day and almost all the frozen pizza was gone. The only thing really left was cauliflower pizza. So that just goes to show you people don't like cauliflower, right? Okay, I'm taking a little water break. Okay, let's, um, I'll check back uh, in a minute, see if there's any other questions. This is all that good stuff that I'll edit out for the replay. Okay, 11, what is the approximate shape of the sampling distribution for P hat? Explain and sketch below. Well, if it started out normal, it's going to finish as normal, right? We're taking a normal graph. We're just dividing it by 50. All that's doing is compressing, and so it's going to stay the same. The shape will stay approximately normal. just squeezed let's see it's been a long time since i spelled squeezed there's q u e e z e d i think just squeezed into a smaller interval now you might be wondering why why did we do this why do we go from the absolute number um to now a proportion and the, really the reason is that's going to be the most useful for realistic problems about the world um, you'll see when I assign the homework questions that it's like that or even on the check for understanding let me see yeah it says suppose that 75 percent of young adult internet users watch online videos we usually get information to us in the form of proportions rather than absolute numbers. I mean, take the coronavirus thing, for example. I know you're probably sick of hearing about it, um, but there's a certain proportion of people that die from it. There's a proportion that recover from it. There's a proportion of people that are getting sick from it. Um, we have the absolute numbers, but when we're trying to generalize, we usually will use proportions. Okay, now let's work on the last one, number 12. We know that bags of Reese's Pieces contain exactly 40% that are orange. If we select a random sample of 50 candies, what's the probability that the sample proportion will be 50% or greater? Okay, so notice the key percentages here. So it's a bag with 40% orange. And yet, we're saying 
what's the chance of getting 50% or greater? Doesn't that seem a lot like our simulation project where you started with one proportion, say 40%, and then you saw, was it rare to ever get 50%? And uh, remember, 5% was considered the standard for rareness. Um, so let's think in terms of that when we get our answer to this. Is it, is it rare to get 50%? Uh, and if it is rare, we'll say, hmm, that must be a special bag of Reese's. But if it's not rare, we'll just say, oh, yeah, that's random uh, sampling for you. That's, that's expected variability. Now notice, we do need to know our sample size of 50, 50 candies. But here's the neat thing. What's the population size? What's big N? Well, it's unknown. It's, it's all Reese's Pieces that have ever been made. We don't need to know it because we're going to use the normal approximation. So that means we need to find a z-score. So the z-score would be, okay, the data value, which is 50% minus the mean, which is 40%, divided by the standard deviation, which we did up here. Okay, it was 0.069. Oh, there's some loud birds outside today. Birds don't know anything about the coronavirus. Okay, that calculation... I don't have it written down. Hold on. Let me do that real quick. Okay, so it's going to be 0.1 divided by 0 0.069. Uh, 1. 1.45... Okay, now since I'm, let me sketch that for you before we look that up. So the mean would be at 0 0.4. I'm going to say it's normal, right? 0 0.5 is going to be about 1.45 standard deviations away. So I'm going to put it right here. Uh, very not good graph, but basically we're looking for this area under the curve here not this um, so I'm gonna go on the internet and look up 1.45 just gonna type in uh, Z chart oh lots of them okay let's just go to the first one 1.45 looks like it's about 0 0.9265 0.9265 so we looked up 0.9265 and again one moment I'm getting a call from the principal good morning Hi, how are you doing? Sure. I'm actually live streaming uh, right now to my statistics class. Do you want to say anything to them? Okay, hold on. I'll put you on speaker. It's here. Here's the principal. Okay, go. Hi, hi, stats. We totally missed you. <laughs> okay. They're they're, on, they're they're patient. They're on hold. Okay. I mean, I took you off speaker. Um. No, no, that's fine. I'm going to edit this and then and then republish it for the kids that aren't watching. There's only about six of them on there right now. Um, so I'm using Google Classroom. 
and um, there that's where I'm putting all the links and that's where they should um, submit their work to as well um, well I, I the first assignment that I gave the percentages coming in some classes were like a third some a half some 70 percent 80 percent um right right now they're all over the place Can you give me an example of what you're talking about? Oh, okay. Um, I'm giving a, yeah, I'm giving two days. Two days per assignment. Well, I think we all sat up when the governor spoke yesterday. Right. And I had heard the uh, I'd heard the Ohio governor say the same thing the day before. I wonder if that that Ohio guy didn't jump the gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing those. Okay, sounds good. Sounds like you miss us. <laughs> I know, I, I was just imagining our classrooms, what they'll look like, uh, kind of like a museum of what it what it looked like before. Oh, yeah, you guys, you might want to check the refrigerators after a while. That could get uh, icky. I, I unplugged mine and I took everything out on that last day, but... You know, I'm just one person. Yeah, well, we're going to have to throw your bananas away. So, oh, well, take the loss on that, right? Because <laughs> those will turn those will turn to liquid after a while. Yeah. All right, will do. Okay, okay take care. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. I don't know if you heard uh, all that, but uh, they just want to know how we're communicating with you guys, and I think you already know. We're almost done here. The last part is, uh, is that really what we wanted? Did we want 0.2965? Um, no, we didn't, because, again, the Z-chart shows you the left side, but we want the right side. So that's why... Um, like for example when we're teaching AP we say this is very important for you to keep straight what you're doing so I'm just gonna go 1 minus 0.9265 and then so it's really small it's like less than 8% so 1 minus that 
Yeah, it's 0.0735, or about 7%. Let's do the notes uh, while we're here. Do you guys have any questions? Let me go back here. No, I'll type that in in case somebody's away. Oh, I did New York questions. That's that's good. Do you have any New York questions? I don't know. All right, I'll check back after the notes. Oh, thank you, Thealinda, for getting back to me. Sometimes I'm feeling real lonely out here. Okay, great. Any questions about anything, like school-related? Coronavirus related, where to find toilet paper, anything like that. Fortunately, I stocked up on some when we uh, when we found out the virus got to to Iran. I think a lot of people stocked up then too. I was just talking to Cass um, from Sixth Period, and she told me she had a lot of things stored up. I was smart. Okay, let's do the notes and then we'll wrap this thing up. And then I'll go back inside and edit this video down. Okay, how many important ideas do we have? Two, three, we got three. Okay, big idea number one. When you're talking about, and notice the title here, by the way, the sampling distribution of p hat. Um, so let me emphasize that since we weren't in class for the video, a sampling distribution is when you take a bunch of samples of the same size and you put them on a graph together. Some will be small, some will be big, but the idea is that the mean of that sampling distribution will approximate the mean of the whole population and that's that's really a breakthrough as far as stats goes and of course the standard deviation we can get the formula from that as well so i guess number one would be oops writing in highlighter what do i always say about that um mean and standard deviation mean and SD, that the mean of P hat is P. Now that means the mean is the same as the mean of the entire distribution. So if you do a sampling distribution and you find the mean, you've just found the mean of the whole population. That's great. So let me write that. P is from the population. The standard deviation of P hat is the square root of P, 1 minus P over N. Now when you're doing that in a calculator, because the square root covers the entire expression, um, either use parentheses or make sure that you press the equal sign after you've calculated this part. You need to get that expression and then take the square root of it. Okay, second big idea. Large counts. Okay, ensures normality. NP has got to be greater than or equal to 10, and so does, oops, N1 minus P, greater than or equal to 10. So that means that the number of successes we expect is at least 10, and the number of failures we expect is at least 10. The reason I keep saying we expect is because you might actually get fewer than 10 on any one sample, but 
we expect in the long run to get at least 10. Okay, and the last one, number three. Um, if we take the process of this last problem up here, let's see, if we go through here and we take number 12 and we turn it into a single formula, what it would look like. The probability um, if sampling distribution of p hat is normal you can get the z-score from doing p hat minus p over the square root of p 1 minus p over n in other words you're taking this formula and you're sticking it down here in the bottom of the equation. And then the top of the formula, this is what we would always call in class data minus mean. Data minus mean. So I actually don't like to use this formula. I, that's one more thing to memorize. If you're going to memorize something, memorize everything that's in big important idea number one. Okay. Well, did you have any questions before we sign off? Let's see. Cass, do you think that we will come back in April or after the summer? Well, the governor of California yesterday um, told a little story about his daughter. I guess he's got a six-year-old daughter. And she was sad that she wasn't going to go back to school. And he told her, well, you're probably not going back to school until after the summer. Now, if that's the governor, and he has more information than I do, and you do, um, what really, what does that say, right? And that wasn't the only governor, as I mentioned before. There was also the governor of um, Ohio that said he didn't think that the kids were going to come back to school till next year now what will that mean locally i don't know but i'm sure that there's a lot of people scrambling to figure out what to do um I th just think about the people that are still working here you got the state superintendent you've got a bunch of people that work for him you've got the county superintendent in the district, you have our superintendent, and you've got a bunch of people that work for him. All these people have PhDs. They're all going to figure out what they're going to do. Oh, and here's one thing. We were supposed to start testing when we came back in April. The governor did say yesterday in his press conference that they have applied to, I think it's the Department of Education, uh, to to have a waiver on that, which basically means if that if that all goes through, we won't have to do testing as a school. You know, it's juniors, and most of you are not juniors. But if we went back in April, we would not be expected to to do any testing. Here's something I um, heard yesterday. One of my favorite uh, talk shows on the radio is uh, on KFI. It's uh, Tim Conway Jr. And he had this uh, doctor on who said, you know, if everybody stayed in their house for two weeks, the number of coronavirus cases would still go up. And the reason is that you've got a 14-day incubation period so you think about it they gave us three weeks off from school even if that that first week everybody just like isolated themselves completely then we would be really cutting it close to come back 
even the first week of April. Um, because they're only testing people who have symptoms. They're not testing people who appear to be healthy. So you put two and two together like that. And I, my guess is I'll give it a pretty high probability that we're not coming back on April 6th. But again, none of the decision makers have said yet. So we're going to have to wait and see. Let's see. Shirley says, do you have any idea of what's going to happen to us seniors? Well, I don't think it means that you graduate next year. Uh, since these are extraordinary times, and, and this is what I was um, talking with uh, to a student last night or texting, what I think is going to happen, a couple of different scenarios. I think we're just going to continue to do school online. I think more kids are going to start to take it seriously. And whether we do tests or not, we may base your whole grade on, on classwork. I don't know. But one scenario is we could just go to the end of the school year. And at the end, we, we can do grades online already. We just issue your grades you technically graduate and we don't have a ceremony or maybe by that time we can have a ceremony i mean who knows right i don't think that they would have you come back in the summer um because frankly schools need the seniors to leave and the reason they need them to leave is because we have eighth graders coming that are going to be ninth graders and our ninth graders will be 10th graders and our 10th graders will become 11th graders. So you see, we need, we need you guys to leave to make room for the next group. And you could follow that all the way back to kindergarten. Kindergarten needs the kindergartners to become first graders because there's a whole new group of kindergartners, kindergartners coming in next year. So I don't think that they would hold you back. Um, so my scenario number two is probably the same way, but, um, they could come in with a more rigid curriculum. I really, really doubt that they're going to do that. Uh, we do have a credit recovery system. We have an E2020 system. Um, but that is supposed to be for very limited uses. And I really don't think they're going to have us do that. More likely than not, you'll just need to continue working from home until you hear that Either we're going to come back or we're not going to come back. Let's see. So, is that it? Any more questions? Um, I'll try to live stream again next week. And um, we'll see what's... Well, actually, next week's going to be spring break, right? So, we're not supposed to give you any assignments during spring break. Uh, I'll probably give you something on Friday. And that way... See, the next time I'll give you an assignment, um, we'll, that will have been a week away. Um, and you have more than 48 hours to do that, so that'll be fine. Um, probably Friday's assignment is, to be honest with you, um, another party. I, I want to show you the party to Betty video on confidence intervals. So that'll be easy. Let's see. Dan says, are you or any other teachers like this whole, uh, oh, do we like this homeschool thing? To tell you the truth, um, this is how I saw myself ending my career. I thought technology would improve, schools would be obsolete, and who knows, 10 years from now, maybe this would be an option that I could just do it this way i mean i think i'll be a great retired person because i haven't been bored this whole time there's always been something to do um uh, matter of fact yesterday it was a really sad really hard thing I, I went over to a friend's house because her son had died and was there when they took the body out and that was uh that that really took a lot of my day even just took it took my mind out of I didn't want to do any work for school or anything I just went outside and started gardening um, 
but I have not had a moment of just, hmm, I don't know what to do. Uh, that hasn't happened to me yet. There's always been something to do. You know, the kids are always hungry. There's always something to fix or someone to see or whatever. So, are you guys bored? I don't know. Do you have enough video games to keep yourself occupied? What what really stinks for me is uh, I don't know if I'm going to get much of my money back from my trip to England. And I don't think I'm going to be able to go to England. After all, I tried to I tried to cancel a few things today. Um, I canceled some of the nights. Most of the hotel nights, when I booked them, they were non-refundable because they get a better rate that way. And um, I'm going to have to probably pay a big fee on the airline flights. So this, this has been a big financial loss to me, this whole um, coronavirus thing. Okay, well, it looks like that's it. Um, you guys stay safe. We'll talk to you soon, okay? I'm going to go ahead and end it.